Welcome to Cat Chat alongside Nick Mancosi. I'm Pete Francis. And Nick, it was another five-point weekend for the NMU hockey team. Yeah, it was a great weekend this weekend for the Northern Michigan Wildcats. They go to Ferris State. They take five points away from them. Uh, Friday night, they skate to a 3-3 tie with the shootout win. And Saturday night, they skate to a 4-0 win over the Ferris State Bulldogs. Well, Nick, the story of the weekend had to be the play of Brian Stewart, who had a career night on Saturday. Yes, he did. Stewart played really wonderful the whole weekend. I believe 48 saves on Friday. Um, he also racks up 51 saves this weekend, or sorry, Saturday, um, in lieu of his shutout. Another plus right now, Nick? is a lot of different guys are stepping up. Yeah, this, this past weekend you saw Florix stepping up. He scores two goals on Saturday. Um, Ray Canusto, he scores a goal on Friday and on Saturday. And the Saturday goal, he gets a pass inside the slot, takes a top shelf against uh, goaltender Pat Nagel from the Bulldogs. And it's, it's a real pro goal. It, to, that's what it looks like to me anyways. The Cats move from 10th place to 7th place after the weekend, Nick, and will have a chance to move up even further this weekend as yes, they host they Western Michigan. Yes, they will. Western's a fairly decent team. They just came off a win against Notre Dame, sweeping them this series. Now, the CCHA conference, is, it's a real tough conference this year with Miami and Ferris State above all the others. Um, Michigan, Notre Dame, Nebraska, Omaha, Alaska, Lake Superior, they're all in the, in the mix for a first round bye, getting into that first place. Now, if, if Northern can somehow find a way to play against Western the way they did on uh, Friday night, the way they played against Ferris, then I think we have a great chance of sweeping them this weekend. Now, Nick, the team also has a chance of getting into the top four the, the rest of the way. Yes, they do. And, and surprisingly enough, we wouldn't have sp suspected this um, two weeks ago with them all the way down in 10th place. Uh, I believe they were six or eight points out of, out of fourth. And the way they were playing, they, were, they weren't playing real tough. They weren't playing good hockey. They weren't defensive-minded. Well, this weekend is going to be another huge series for the Cats. When we come back, Bryce Burge will join me to discuss the latest on NMU basketball. Stay with us. Can't get enough of Northern Michigan athletics? Well, you're in luck, because Cat Chat is Northern Michigan University's new television sports show, featuring highlights, recap, analysis, and interviews with all your favorite Wildcat players. Join us Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on Marquette Channel 20 or follow us online at catchattv.org as we bring you the latest in Wildcat sports. Catchat, the UP's number one sports show. What's up everybody, this is Mike Handel with your Wildcat sports update. The women's track and field team traveled to Stevens Point on Saturday in the Pointer Invitational, which is a non-scoring meet. Krista Squires won the weight throw with a distance of 16.84 meters and Bailey Franklin won the triple jump with a height of 11.27 meters. In volleyball news, volleyball head coach Don McYoder announced earlier this week the hiring of former Wildcat player and NMU Athletic Hall of Fame inductee Kim Falkenhagen as the new assistant coach of the women's volleyball team. In NMU lacrosse action on Saturday, the men took, took first at the Superior Dome tourney. Ag Agassi led the Cats in goal scored and he also leads all D2 players in scoring. On Wednesday, NMU football signed 26 new recruits and seven transfers, five of which are from the UP. For your Wildcat Sports Update, I'm Mike Hanold. I'm Brian Nugent from the Northern Michigan University Wildcats men's hockey team. You're watching Cat Chat. Welcome back. Joining me now is Bryce Burge to talk some enemy hoops. And Bryce, we'll start with the women's team who just continues to roll as they picked up two more wins this week. Yeah, there were two really solid wins for the most part. They started off with a great uh, retribution win, really, of 81-65 uh, final score over Ashland. Ashland was the team that we had really struggled off the bat against when we traveled down to Ohio. Uh, we didn't score for about almost 10 straight minutes in that game and ended up only losing by five or so. Uh, so we came out a lot faster, a lot harder, and a lot better in our shooting percentage and was able to dominate. Uh, then on, on Saturday, another good performance by the Wildcats as they beat Tiffin 73-59. to uh, Russia had a double-double in both games too, which is great because uh, she's really stepped up with uh, Hillary Bowling being out due to injury. Switching to the men's team, they split their two games this week. 
Yeah, and the problem is, is should they have split it? Because really they shouldn't have. Uh, they lost really badly to Ashland in the biggest game of the week, in my opinion. It was the bubble buster between the eighth-seeded Ashland Eagles and ninth-seeded Northern with the top eight moving to the uh, conference uh, championship tournament. Uh, so, so they lost that game badly. Then they come in, they score 51 points in the first half against Tiffin, and then they take the pedal off so much that Tiffin only loses by about 10 or so uh, when they were down by about, I think they were down by 26 at one point in the first half. And Tiffin hasn't beaten a Division II opponent all year. So, so to, uh, to allow that big of a comeback against a quality of opponent like Tiffin, it shows the weaknesses of your offense. And now there's just a giant mess in the conference. There's only three games separating the sixth team from the 11th team because uh, Wayne State has lost both their games this weekend. So Wayne State and Hillsdale are both 8-8 eight and eight in the conference. Uh, Northwood is 7-9. and nine. Ashland and Northern are both 6-10 and 10 because Ashland lost to Tech. When Tech won both their games this weekend, so they're back in this playoff thing at 5-11. and 11. So there's this one giant mess here going on. And with the opponents, uh, Northern has Grand Valley and Ferris State coming up this weekend, uh, defending Nas uh, def uh, Division II national champion Finlay, uh, Hillsdale, the hottest team in the region, and then uh, uh, good quality opponents in the Cardinals of Saginaw Valley and Lake State to end the season. It's going to be tough for the Wildcats to go in and, and finish strong. Yeah, Bryce, one huge positive for the men's team this weekend, though, was the performance of Mark Renelick. Renelick did a great job, and most of those points came from behind the three-point arc. Uh, he had 24 by halftime, which was just uh, a couple points shy of being half of the Wildcats' points in the, in the game, or uh, in the first half, excuse me. And... Uh, to have that many points is great for a team because it's got someone that they can rally behind from behind the arc and they, so they can have the uh, dribble in and then bounce out pass. So that opens a lot more for people like uh, McElroy so that way he can drive to the hoop. You can get the big passes to, uh, uh, to Benson or Murphy as they come down the court and transition. So uh, having a good performance by Renelik really helps the Cats. Well, Bryce, coming up this week, there's another home stand for both the men's and the women's team against Ferris State and Grand Valley State. Yeah, uh, Thursday is going to be the biggest games. Uh, those are against Grand Valley, and in the women's side, it's absolutely huge. You've got both teams 13 and three. They're tied for second place in the North. Whoever wins this game is going to get the second seed in the GLIAC North, and uh, that means a home playoff spot. So that's absolutely huge, and we're also uh, with both these teams fighting for seeding in the the NCAA tournament, this is a huge game for the women. The men's side, Grand Valley is going to come in very angry and upset because they broke their winning streak uh, at Grand, uh, Northern did against Grand Valley. Grand Valley is the number one team in the conference. They just beat Finlay, uh, who's the the South leader. So. Uh, Grand Valley is going to come in, and we're going to try to hope that uh, Grand Valley has the same problems that they did last year uh, when they came up to Marquette, specifically with their offensive rebounding and uh, shooting. Uh, they shot their lowest free throw percentage at, uh, at Northern last year. So if they can have those problems, and then Northern, uh, the men, make sure that they don't have a second half collapse like they've had so many times this season, then it could spell another victory for the Wildcats. Should be a great weekend of basketball at the Barry. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's edition of the show for Bryce Burge and the entire Cat Chat crew. I'm Pete Francis. Until next time, go Cats.